With Senate Update, I'm Julie Bartke. Citing recent shootings across the country, a group of Minnesota Republican lawmakers are proposing legislation that would allow active military members to carry their personal firearm. The proposal was the topic of a news conference on Monday. Uh, I'm Senator Paul Gazalka from rural Nisswa. We have a number of legislators, uh, both senators and representatives, that are here uh, to talk about this legislation. Uh, today we're introducing legislation that allows people in the armed forces and Minnesota National Guard to carry a weapon while in uniform or without uniform without a permit. Uh, there's been a number of uh, cases around the country. I'd just read a few. In 2009, an attack on an Army recruiting station in Little Rock, Arkansas, that left one private den and one wounded. That was Al-Qaeda. In November 2009, a shooting at Fort Hood, Texas. Uh, again, there was 32 wounded. That was Jihad. In September 2013, a shooting at the Washington Navy Yard, killing 12 people. Uh, in March of this year, an alleged plot uh, inspired by ISIS to attack a military base was foiled. And now in Chattanooga, Tennessee, another recruiting station with people losing their life. And so we know that we need to take action. And this is probably the number one thing that I want to say as we're moving forward, is men and women in uniform simply being attacked because they are representing America and stand for America should have the right and the ability to defend themselves. This legislation in Minnesota gets the ball rolling. Uh, it's, it's really only the beginning. We drafted it last week. Uh, I'll tell you that the, uh, the Senate research that helped me, they went on vacation. So we know that we are moving forward and this is the beginning of that legislation. Uh, I will and have been working with the Adjutant General in his office. Uh, we're not interested in doing something that they would not also support. Uh, but we knew we needed to get the ball rolling. I will tell you that at least seven state governors have already taken action, either arming their guardsmen or moving recruiting offices into their National Guard or into their armories, and yet we've not done anything that I'm aware of in Minnesota. So in addition today, we're also asking the governor to take appropriate action in Minnesota. Uh, beyond that, uh, I'll answer some questions, but I really want Representative Heinzman also to talk uh, because the House is working on some things related to this as well. Thank you. Thanks, Bob. Uh, when uh, Senator Gazelka approached me on this, I uh, started visiting with people in my community, visiting with folks who have uh, family members in the military, family members maybe even working in a recruiting station, and uh, they're concerned. They're worried about their family. They're worried about uh, their their safety on the job, as uh, it does appear as though there has been uh, some more activity. Uh, that there have been folks that have been targeted in those facilities. And I'm glad to have the opportunity to talk about this issue and uh, encourage the governor to look at this more seriously and uh, also potentially look at a legislative solution. So. Thank you. I also represent uh, Camp Ripley, and I've heard a, a number of uh, uh, people that serve there that are concerned. There's been a number of rumors of things happening. I'd rather not repeat rumors, but point being is that they are concerned for their safety. Mm -hmm. And so we will continue to work with them as well as far as what direction we finally go as, as we move forward on this. But again, this is getting the ball rolling. We think it's important. Uh, I think we're living in, in a new day. Uh, we know that ISIS today is publicly saying to their, their, those that support them to uh, target police officers and target the, the military. And so we need to respond differently. Any questions? Uh, Senator, um, this would contradict, though, what the De Defense Department is recommending. They don't want military personnel to be carrying mm -hmm. firearms. I mean, how does this create a problem for, you know, airmen, soldiers, et cetera, who are obviously, they may want to arm themselves at the same time, from the top down, they're saying, the Defense Department is saying, we don't want this. Yeah, that's a very good question. While in uniform, they will not be able to uh, as long as uh, President Obama and the Defense Department say that they can't. Uh, part of the reason we have this as state legislation is we know that if they did want them to, that state legislation needs to line up with that. Uh, that's part of the reason you see some governors that have said, you know, I want the National Guard to be armed. And if they're in the same recruiting area as the other armed forces, then they actually do have some protection there. And so. Uh, that's why I say it's, it's a work in progress. Uh, you 
you decide you want to do something, then you find out there's all kinds of little things that we have to jump through uh, to make this happen. I do know that the, um, let me make sure I get his name right, the, uh, uh, there is a general that's being tapped uh, to run the Army that basically has said that they are open to the possibility of arming them. But even if they do, state law has to work together with that. And so just to be clear though, would Minnesota under, would you be able to pursue legislation that would allow Minnesota National Guard members to do this despite the, the federal stance on that, it? Yes, that is correct. There is a rare exception where National Guard from each state uh, is under the authority of the governor and the governor can order them to be armed, which has happened in I believe seven states, including uh, nearby Wisconsin. What does General Nash say to you about it? Uh, I called General Nash and ended up talking to one of the advisors under him. Uh, they um, are looking at this uh, issue seriously. They, I know that they're going to do something, but uh, I don't have a definite answer from them yet, them yet, which is also why I said that uh, I will not do anything without working hand in hand with the Adjutant General. Um, you know, we're not trying to do something against them, we're trying to do something for them and for those that uh, represent us. She hasn't taken a position either way yet. Not that I know of. And I, I, and I have not heard any public statements from Governor Dayton either, and that's why we're encouraging him to uh, take a step forward. If the uniform <coughs> makes, makes people a target for terrorism, is there a chance that you would adjust this that it would only apply in cases where they're wearing the uniform? I'm open, yeah. That's why I say I want to work in w with the Adjutant General. Um, obviously, when you put uh, a uniform on, you're, that's apparently where you're really a target. Um, you know, so we're going to have to talk about how we do this going forward, but I, I know we're in a different world today. So I just want, I just want, I'm just on the nuts and bolts of the center, forgive me. Yep. So if you are an individual who is at a recruiting station in this law or wherever, they would be allowed to carry a firearm if they were working, recruiting people to, to work in military personnel, or would this be off the site? Does that make sense? The, the, the language as currently drafted allows people to carry regardless. So whether you're in uniform, not in uniform, I can tell you that uh, Georgia has very similar language right now that's in law, um, but we really are thinking broader than even the language where it is today. You know, we want to encourage, and that's why we're encouraging the governor, uh, Camp Ripley, for example, that I represent, ought to have armed soldiers uh, at their checkpoints that I, I believe is important, but I, again, will work with uh, the Adjutant General and the Governor on that. Uh, I, I know the House uh, Wednesday has a hearing on this very issue. Uh, Representative Heinzman will be there and testifying there. Uh, you know, we're going to have to work together on this, but I think this is an issue that's not going away. And so rather than put my head in the sand, I want to face it head on and, and address it. But the legislation as drafted would simply say that they can conceal carry personal firearms if they're active duty without getting a permit. That is correct. So it wouldn't address the requirement that you mentioned that some governors have had or even the permission that you'd like Governor Dayton to address. This would just be about that particular permit. Yes, and, and I expect it to be broadened as we move forward, but that is correct. What exactly can the governor do? I'm unclear on that. He can, uh, uh, by executive order, say that I want all National Guardsmen to be armed. That, that is what has happened in seven other states. So he has, he has the authority over our National Guard, but not over uh, the Navy, the Air Force, the Army, the Marines. Could he do that without the change in concealed carry permits? Yes. Yes, he could. In addition to, to these various military uh, base shootings that you mentioned, there's, there's been the sort of epidemic of mass shootings at other sorts of public places. To, do you think there are other public policy approaches that could be mounted to, to take on that problem? You know, this legislation is going to focus on the military side of it, but, you know, there are, mental health is another issue. Uh, the uh, recent uh, shooting, the movie shooting, uh, was a mental health issue. I heard a governor, or the governor of Louisiana said had the language that he had in his state been in the state where that occurred, that person would not have been able to get a gun. So that's, without a doubt, that's an issue, but that's not the issue we're trying to focus on here. Can I say that the, uh, what the governor could do is allow them or require them to be armed? 
I believe he can require, because I've read from other states that the governor required them to be carried, but I've got to believe, and I would expect in Minnesota that the governor would work with the adjutant general to do uh, what's best and, and take that information from the general. Part of the reason we're doing this legislatively is we've not heard anything from the governor, and so we are moving it forward, but at the end of the day, we're all going to have to work together. Require them to be armed while on duty? Not well, for example, they, you know, a duty or off duty. For example, if you're in uniform, we already know if you're in uniform, you're in a target. You're, you're a target, so why would we not want them armed? Um, they, you know, that's, that is some of the issue that we're going to have to work through, but I, I think that that's a good reason for them to be armed. And then off duty, out of uniform? I don't have any problem with them being armed off duty. But, not, but required to be armed off duty? I personally would not require them to be armed off duty, out of uniform, uh, if you're asking my personal okay. opinion. And then what do you say to the gun rights groups that argue, well, if you put more guns in more people's hands, there are going to be more shootings and more injuries and perhaps... Well, you know, I'm, I'm a gun rights supporter and I, I see correlations between states that have uh, um, Gun, or uh, laws that allow citizens to carry guns and crime is less. You know, so I, I'm not worried about more crime. I think we're going to have less of an opportunity. But I want to come back to that statement I made because that's really the heart of this whole thing. And I just I wrote it down because it was so wise. You know. But uh, you know, men and women in uniform, you know, simply being attacked because they represent America, should have the right and the ability to defend themselves, not just the right. They have to have the ability. We have to give them the ability to carry that gun and to say, no, if you shoot, I'm shooting back. And I think that's uh, appropriate. You just said that more guns means less crime. Which states in particular you think is there? Texas would be one. And which crimes in particular? I don't have the data in front of me. Okay. The exemption that's in statute for police officers that you want to use for military folks too, was that part of the original concealed carry legislation or was that an exemption that was added later? Can you call that offhand? That was, if you've seen the bill, it's very simple. So it, it's all part of the original, it's only a few sentences. Sure. So one more question. Yes. Okay. Um, so if, if military personnel are not required to get a permit to carry concealed, then uh, doesn't that mean they don't have to pass a background check that shows they're not uh, subject to a domestic violence restraining order or have mental illness? Right, which is part of the reason I want to work with the adjutant general. I, I already know they have psychologically, psychological testing, you know, but I don't want to s assume that I know what's best for them other than the ability for them to, to protect themselves. So, but that's, and that's why we're going to have a hearing or the House is going to have a hearing Wednesday uh, to make sure we get this right, but today we're, we're moving the ball forward.